My name is Damon. I'm with Marvin Windows and Doors. Um, I graduated high school and went right into the building industry. I started with 84 Lumber and worked, worked for them for about seven, eight years and stayed on the dealer level for a long time, managing lumber yards, doing different things um, within a lumber yard facility, whether it was sales, management, things of that nature. Then I hopped out and I started doing the actual construction part. Um, sold a lot of materials, now I wanted to actually put them together. So I was a general contractor for years as well. Um, doing new construction, uh, custom homes, hotels, apartment complexes, but I also did a lot of remodeling as well. So, and then I went back, now I'm on the manufacturer side. A whole different, a whole different level. Um, and a different type of, of work within the industry. But the point of all of that is number one, to give you a little bit of background on me, but also help you guys understand, I, I came straight out of high school. If anyone tells you there's not an incredible amount of opportunity within the trades, they're wrong. It's whatever you want it to be. So I had a direction I wanted to go and I was able to do that through the trades. So just keep that in mind based off of what Derek was saying. This morning, all I'm gonna do is I'm going to walk you through a very simple and basic manufacturer best practice when installing your window. Is this gonna be the same for every manufacturer? No. Nope. Marvin has certain recommendations that they prefer with our windows, okay? So if you're installing a Marvin window, what I would recommend, actually anybody's window, whether it's Anderson, Pella, us, a vinyl window, just take a couple minutes for a seasoned contractor even, I, I recommend this, take a couple minutes and just read the instructions. Read what they recommend. Why that's important is because whenever you call me, because you're having issues with your windows or your doors, the first thing I'm going to look at is, was it installed per hour, our recommendations. If not, you can run into a lot of different issues. We always back our product. That's one of the great things about Marvin. That's one of the reasons why I work for them. And we will always help our customer out, but you can run into warranty issues. If you take it upon yourself to not do what the, rec what the manufacturer is recommending you do whenever you're installing your windows, then you could be jeopardizing the warranty passed on to your customer, okay? So, we have an opening, thank you. You guys built this for us, is that correct? Seniors did, thank you guys, appreciate it. Um, today I'm going to work with our all fiberglass product. It's a casement window, very simple installation. Uh, I, I'm just, like I said, it's gonna be quick. I don't wanna keep you for too long, everyone's got, got stuff to do. But there are a few, few key points I wanna point out whenever, um, whenever I'm walking through this. So. First, we've got our opening. I don't have Tyvek here today, so that's what I normally use, but some of you might use blue skin, some of you might use a, any, any type of house wrap or exterior envelope. Um, the biggest key whenever you're working with your, with your house wrap is don't connect. If you keep this thought in mind, you'll be fine. Don't connect the exterior to the interior. What do I mean by that? So. Traditional way of cutting, if you have house wrap on here, this opening would be completely covered with house wrap. You would come over, you would cut two diagonals at the top, come straight down each side, and now what we recommend is you cut it flush at the sill. So whenever you cut those diagonals, it's gonna to be too long whenever you fold that back in. And what I've seen in the past is or people have folded that back in then they've stapled it along the interior rough framing. You can't do that. You're connecting the exterior to the interior. So number one, water. Number two, you have no thermal break there now. So those temperatures, temperature differences will flow right through that opening. You get a drafty opening. A lot of times it's because there's not a proper, proper thermal break. Could be that it's not insulated, but there are a lot of times it's a thermal break issue, okay? 
So whenever you fold this back, what I recommend is whenever you attach it to the studs, cut it halfway. It doesn't need to come in any further than that. Okay, and on your sill, you're gonna fold the head up so that you'll flash it over top or underneath that to fold it back down. On the exterior of your installation, the way that it used to, for a long time, it was um, make it waterproof. But we found over time in a lot of testing, you aren't going to make it waterproof. That is always going to fail at some point. It will fail. So the thought process is a lot like a roof now. You want to manage the water. If and when the water gets in, what are you doing to manage where it goes? Okay? Because you don't want it sitting, right? You don't want it just sitting on the sill. If it sits on the sill, it could rot your window. It's going to rot the rough framing over time. It takes a long time, but it will happen. Um, so now, whenever you're talking installation best practices, if you just think of it in that way, how am I managing that water? You really aren't going to go wrong at that point. So anyway, you cut your Tyvek, you fold it in, um, you connect it. The next thing you're going to do, what we recommend is we do recommend a slope sill. And three degrees is all that you need to get water to run. If you aren't going to slope the sill, I'll show you another thing as we move forward that you can do that will help with that. Um, in our installation instructions, you'll see it is recommended that you put a piece of beveled cedar siding on the sill before you put your flex wrap on, your sill pan. Reason for that is that gives you that three degrees, gives you that little bit of slope that if water were to penetrate that opening, it has a place to go. Is everyone going to do that? I mean, realistically? Probably not. So I'll show you a way or recommend a way that you can achieve a very similar goal or end to the goal without sloping your sill. So your flex wrap, this is Tyvex flex wrap. Um, this is my personal preference. This is what I always use. I always use a Tyvek system. There's a lot of systems out there now. Zip tape is fine. The zip system is fine. Um, blue skin is fine. The only thing that we recommend with or don't recommend with our product is no asphalt based products with our product. Reason being is we utilize a flexible vinyl nailing flange and if you flash with an asphalt based product it will over time eat away at that nail flange. Okay. So whenever you put your flex wrap in, whenever you cut it, it's very important to be about six inches up on each side. All that you're doing there is you're guaranteeing that in your sill pan, even if water does build up in your corner, it, even if it freezes, it's not going to push past your sill pan back into, back into the framing of your window. Okay? Because everything's based on keeping water from getting into your rough, rough framing, into your wall. Once it's in your wall, you don't know where it's going to go. You don't know what's going to happen. So you want to keep that out. So six inches on each side, you fold it over, and then you put a nice bend on your corner. What I use whenever I do that is I use a, a speed square, the flat end of the speed square, and I just roll it right over keeps it nice and smooth and you go with the grain and then it flattens it out for you okay so always always use some type of sill pan before installation that could be a flex wrap like this you could do a hard sill pan and that's usually roll form aluminum that you bend there are certain applications for that where that would be required but so once you have your sill pan on, your Tyvex cut, you're ready to put your window in. At least start putting your window in, right? You can at least get it in the opening. Um, before you put it in the opening, what you'll want to do, though, is along your nail flange, you'll want to run sealant, okay? It'll be a continuous bead on the side, stop about an inch down from the corner, 
continuous bead across the head. Again, leave that corner open. A continuous, another continuous bead down the side. No caulking on the sill, on the bottom nail flange. Why? Water can get out. Exactly. Again, we're managing. We're managing moisture. Now, I've had guys, I've, I've done this exact same presentation before, and I've had people say to me, well, why do I want to buy a Marvin? If, if you know your window's going to leak, why am I going to buy a Marvin? That's not what I'm saying. If you flash properly, most likely your window's not going to leak. No window will. All we're doing is we're managing just in case, right? We're thinking ahead. We're thinking ahead to 30 years down the road whenever something's deteriorated on the exterior of that house and we still want to keep the water out or we want to manage where that water is going. Okay? So continuous bead, side, head, side. Leave the corners open. No sealant in the corners, no sealant at the bottom nail flange. All right? Now you can take your window. Make sure your nail flange is out. Now what I need you to do is, can you look on each side? Make sure the window is centered in the opening. Okay, so whenever you put it up in the opening, your inside guy, I've always utilized a team of two whenever I'm putting windows in. I was a framer for a long time. Part of the responsibility for a new construction framer is putting the doors and windows in. Teams of two, unless you're dealing with really large assemblies, seem to work best. One guy on the outside, one guy on the inside. So once the window's in and it's centered in the opening, you want it centered because that's going to give even reveals the whole way around. It, it's going to help for the future, right? Your trim guy's going to like you a lot more if the, winner, if the window is centered in the opening. Um, you're going to have more room to adjust if you need to, if your window is centered in the opening, okay? Throw level on it, both the sill and the side. As long as you're level at that point, then you can tack it. You put one along the side, one at the top. So notice I didn't just start going crazy. Um, fastener, real quick, I didn't say, I didn't talk about this. We recommend a two inch nail, two inch roofing nail. That two inch roofing nail, if you're using that, you can go every other hole in the nail flange. Anything less than that, you need to attach it by in every hole. That's a ratings thing. It's not a matter of whether it's gonna hold the window in, but that's our performance, right? We know our window will, will perform to a certain level with those fasteners, okay? So now what we would do here is before we continue fastening, we're gonna to check to make sure that the window is square. How do we check that it's square in the opening? If you're on the outside of the window, there's a real easy way. Correct. Yep. Take your measurement, right? Take your corner measurements. Then you know. But if you aren't square in that opening, that gives you an opportunity to move that because you haven't fastened it the whole way around. You move it within that, within that opening, you make those adjustments, and then in, you know you're sitting. You're sitting where you're supposed to be. You've already put a level on it, so you know that it's level in the opening. Now you can make your adjustments, okay? Also, shimming. Um, some guys do this. I don't know. Um, I never really did it this way. It is a recommended installation procedure within our instructions. I would say this is on a per job basis based on the contractor. If you want to do it this way, you can. Um, whenever you fasten, put those first two fasteners in, our installation instructions recommend that you also shim that corner right up here. Okay? So that way, once you are making those adjustments in the window itself to square it up, you aren't pushing it that, towards that corner. So two inch nails, you can use screws whenever you install if you want to. 
So two inch nails, every other hole, anything less than that, you're gonna wanna go every hole. So now what we would normally have is we have, we have corner gaskets with every window that we supply, corner gaskets come out with that. There are four gaskets, there are flexible foam, and you would put those, you would put a, a bead of caulking back here, and then you roll your corner gasket right over top of the edge of the frame, back here. All you're doing is making sure that you aren't creating a hard edge for water to sit. That's what you want to avoid. Nice smooth edge and that water is going to run, right? So once the corner gas gaskets are in, you'll want to put your straight flashing in. This is going to go along your head and your side jams, all right? And all that is, is that's to secure, that's to flash the sides and the head of the, of the window, okay? And you're going to do the same thing with this that you do with the corner gaskets. Whenever you put it on, you're going to roll it, just roll it a little bit along that edge so that it creates, instead of having a hard seam, it creates just a little bit of a soft edge for water to roll right off, okay? And very important thing is if you cut your straight flash too long, don't leave it at the top. Because whenever you put your flashing across your top, you want to make sure that this is covering, that your head flashing is covering your side jam flashing. If it's not, then you're creating another ridge up here for water to get stuck and freeze. If you do your flashing straight down that nail flange, it doesn't mean it's going to fail. This is a manufacturer recommendation, you know. Um, so the other part of that, so the other part of this installation is we put it on the side jams, we don't, and then we put it along the head. You're going to, that, at that point, you're going to fold your Tyvek down over top of that flashing. That's going to complete the head part, portion of your flashing once you tape those seams. Always, if you have a cut in your Tyvek anywhere in your exterior envelope, always tape it. It won't work effectively or efficiently if you don't. That's, that's what that tape's for. Leave the bottom open. No flashing on the bottom. If you're in a high wind area or building a house on top of a hill, something that you can do is if you're worried about water being blown up underneath the siding and coming up that way, you can put what's called a high pressure skirt in. So you still aren't covering this flange. You aren't flashing it, you aren't caulking it. But what you're doing is you're taking some flashing, a piece of house wrap, and then you'll connect that. You'll connect the house wrap to your flashing and then you'll go right along the bottom of that nail flange so moisture can still wick out through that, through here if needed. And all that does is then if wind and rain drives at the window, you have a high pressure skirt there. It would have to actually lift that, that house wrap up in order to drive up underneath the window, okay? In a normal installation though, we recommend that there, other than your fasteners, you don't do anything with this bottom, with the sill, nothing. So if you don't slope your sill, if you, because, so if you slope your sill, please don't forget to adjust your rough openings accordingly. If you put a piece of cedar siding in like we recommend, you'll need to adjust your rough opening by about three-eighths of an inch or else your window won't fit. If you don't slope your sill, what I recommend happens is before you complete your installation, you put a bead of caulking on the interior of your sill. And all that that's going to act as is a dam. If water were to get in through the exterior, it can't get past that bead of caulking on the interior. Okay? So once you have your straight flash on, your tie back down, you're taped up, your installation is complete on the exterior. But the install itself is not done. 
A complete installation is the window buttoned up on the outside and on the inside. And what I mean by that is on the inside, you still have shim work to do, right? Because no window installation is complete or door installation is complete without shimming the window. That gets lost a lot. That's why I'm stressing it. Because most of your framers, if, if you're installing windows, and I was, and I did it for years, shimming the windows was the trim guy's job. But if you are being paid to put that window in, a complete installation is also shimming that window properly. Remember, you guys are putting it in the hole. So you're gonna be held accountable if it doesn't work right. Okay? So as well as shims, what I also recommend and what Marvin recommends is that on, against the nail flange, you put what's called backer rod. Does everyone know what backer rod is? Foam, it's foam, circular, comes in a roll. Put your backer rod out against your nail flange. That gives you protection against moisture coming directly in at that nail flange, but it also serves another purpose. It's a little, it has a little bit of insulating value. The other purpose is once you spray foam, that inside or even fiberglass, once you spray foam to insulate around that window, spray foam does not adhere itself to backer rod. So it gives you, it creates a natural channel that if water does get into your window, simply by utilizing backer rod and spray foam, you've now created a channel for it to go. And it can run through that channel right out the bottom because you water managed and you didn't waterproof. Does 